Welcome to Womanocity for Women with Curiosity. I'm Tadia Rice, your tour guide on this virtual journey where I introduce you to remarkable women, to curious women, women who take charge, women who are incredibly talented, history-making, ceiling-breaking, powerhouse women, braced by grace with matter-of-fact impact, who are beautiful and empowered and gloriously curious, like me and you and every wonderful woman walking our beautiful earth. Each week, my guest and I vibrate my studio as we create our futures, as we liberate our minds and deliberate humankind. We women go into space and we improve the planet we live on. We have so much value in the world, and that's why I want to share with my listeners so many of these exceptional, brilliant, and inspirational women I know. Every woman has a story, and no matter what it is, it empowers and motivates others to know more and do more. There's nothing women can't achieve. We rock this world. And I thank you for being with me on Woman Radio, where we're rocking the world. I'm so happy you're listening because it's a great day. My guest today makes my day so much better, not because she has the voice of an angel or that she was a Grammy nominee or a multiple Native American Music Awards winner or Miss Navajo Nation or one of National Public Radio's 50 Great Voices or a Black History Maker honoree or an advocate against domestic abuse and violence, but because she is so real so courageous, and so willing to unite diverse peoples as an African-American and Native American from the Dine or Navajo Nation, Radma Lakoti sits in a unique position as a woman of many talents and great recognition. And I couldn't be happier to welcome into the studio the one and only Radma Lakoti. Yat e shik ain Johnny beautiful relatives. She e ya red mala kodi and chek as chit and shlen a hitle bashish chin a kidene dash a chain a hitle da shinale a kut a e san shle a dotis is equal yere e ye see that nasha. Greetings, beautiful relatives. My name is Red Millicote, and I am of the Red Ochre Cheek Clan, born for the African American. My maternal clans are of the Mexican clan, and my paternal clans are of the African American. And this is how I identify myself from the Netra, Navajo territory, and a place on Navajo territory named Loop. It's in Navajo and Dine Keche, it's called Tizizi. And so I am very honored and grateful to share space with Tadia and everyone on the Womanosity for Women with Curiosity radio show. So again, for having me. Oh, that was beautiful, Radmila. Thank you so much. It's just a joy to have you. You know, your story is rather unique. You were born in Arizona, like me, but I was raised in the dry and arid land of the Ukchin people, who are part of the Odom culture. You were born and raised in the beautiful and picturesque plateaus of the Navajo Nation in Grand Falls, Arizona. It's a southwestern paradise of the U.S. When you were little, you had your own herd of sheep. And you cared for them, whether you were on foot or on horseback. You learned to spin their wool. And you've said that the highlight of your sheep herding days was standing in the corral, singing at the top of your lungs to your audience, who were the grateful sheep and goats you cared for. Well, now you sing for people all over the world who appreciate your voice, your compositions, your music. Did you know back then that one day you would have fans who were people who would enjoy you just as much as those gorgeous little animals? (laughs) Did I know back then whether or not I would have fans that were people? (laughs) Yep, yep, instead of the sheep and goats. Well, actually, at first I will say that I appreciated the kinship that the sheep and the goats extended to me at the time while they patiently listened to me as I performed to them before chasing them out of the sheep corral and tending to them. I would say that that was something that I 
dreamed about, right? I mean, because it was a childhood dream. It was something that eventually, of course, happened as time went on. So yeah, going from the sheep corral to my original red carpet to the red carpet at the Grammys. I mean, and all of that was in between. It was a blessing. And I'm very grateful for the support that that my fans all over have 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 given me. You are so, so appreciated by, by millions of people and literally all over the world that have embraced your music. Radmila, when and where did you find your place in the music world? How did that happen? I always say that I, I came out of my mom's womb singing. <laughs> and I also come from a line of Hatafis, Dine practitioners and singers on both my Dine and Black side. Both heritages are singers, right? I come from a, a line of singers. And so when I first started singing, it was in the church with my grandmother and my cousins and relatives that were in the church uh, taught me my first song in Dine Keche in Navajo. And that was Jesus Loves Me in Dine Keche in Navajo. And then I would listen to my cousins sing, uh, you know, they had beautiful voices and they would play the piano and sing. From that, I, I just developed a love for music. In terms of going out into the music world, embracing the professional side of, of, of the music, that happened from the Dine people. Radmila, when and where did you find your place in the music world? How did that happen? I was introduced to Kenny Records through another fellow musician and was basically signed on the spot. Uh, Candy Records is the oldest independent Native American record label and a reputable one at that who care genuinely about their artists and the relationship, you know, with, with their artists. And so I've been very blessed to, to be able to be in the Candy Records, be on the Candy Records family. The Canyon Records label is absolutely the best. And so I urge my listeners, look up Canyon Records, C-A-N-Y-O-N. Look at all of the artists. And of course, among them, you will find Radmila. But every piece of music they, they release is magnificent. And it truly honors the indigenous peoples of North America in a, a most creative and remarkable way. Now, you learned to speak Dine Navajo before you learned to speak English, and you write and sing in both languages. What are some of your favorite songs, and what inspired you to write them? The songs that I wrote was actually one of them was, was Tears, Tears of a Woman, when it was a song that I wrote, and with the guitar accompaniment by uh, Shana, uh, a relative of mine, my brother, Klee Benali, and that song means a lot to me because of what the adversity that I experienced at the time with gender-based violence, you know, when I was in an abusive relationship. And so that song is, is about that. The other song that I love is Beautiful Mother Earth. And that song was actually written by my uncle, Dr. Herman Cody, who actually wrote a lot of my songs and we've co-written songs together. And then the other one is Grandmother Poem. A lot of people don't know you hold a Bachelor's of Science degree in public relations, and you're also working towards your master's degree in sociology. So do you think a formal education is important for creative people, especially musicians and singers? It definitely helps to elevate our work, you know, what we enjoy doing, and it also creates more opportunities for us as, as musicians and singers. And I just see it as it just elevating our work that we're passionate about. In 2010, you were one of NPR's 50 Great Voices, a year-long series that featured singers from all over the world. You were also awarded the Black History Makers Award in 2012, and you were the first Native American Awards presenter at the 55th Grammy pre-telecast award ceremony, where you were nominated in three categories, Best Female Artist, record of the year and traditional album from your acclaimed seeds of life how did it feel to be recognized for your work and on stage with the best of the best i was very nervous for one <laughs> very nervous as i presented didn't know probably a vast majority of the the musicians who 
because they don't tell you in advance uh, and you can't go over their names or the music. So you just kind of have to wing it when you're up on stage. But I was very nervous and just really took it all in, enjoyed the blessing at that moment and at that time and got to meet amazing singers and, and artists uh, Bonnie, like Bonnie Raitt. To be recognized for my music and for my work was, was definitely an honor and, and I appreciate that. It was a dream come true for me. Remember, I was a little kid watching the Grammy Awards. So to actually be there wearing my kelche, you know, my traditional attire on the red carpet, representing our people, uh, the Diné people and indigenous people, it was an honor. Can we hear one of your favorites from this magnificent album of yours called Seeds of Life? Yes, it's the grandmother poem. That poem was written to express my gratitude to her. I always remember when I had her first listen to that poem, she was in the hospital and I put the earphones on her ear and she listened to the poem. And it was just a poem about how I felt about her and just thanking her for being that powerful, positive force in my life and just everything that was admirable about her. Her name was Dorothy Cody. She is the individual that raised me since I was a little girl and taught me the life-sustaining methods and language of our people. So she was the wind beneath your wings. <laughs> she was the wind beneath my wings. Let's take a listen to this beautiful poem that you sing chant that came from your album Seeds of Life. It's called Grandmother. And don't go away because we'll be right back with the wonderful and remarkable Red Malakoti, the one and only. <laughs> Shimasana Baina, a ye la ya, beneath a cart bear, big eschia. Ye glocko, or Jean, beneath Billy's long. Benat son, and Jonagi, and Halingo, the Sosle. Bejay dot seda, a yo or net a ya. She ra ye galco, ye go behats e. Satana ye a dart a, chickilto. ရှင်းလက်တာဆီလဲရှင်းမဆန်းရှင်းလက်တော့နှစ်ချက်ခွေးလီတော့အယောအနှစ်ရှိကီးလ်ထက်ဝေယာနေယောဟိုဝေယာ
chata hui in the tahle. Doheda da tolneta. Nika ishe nigo. Akosh masane penashni. Yego tisla nashtate. Villa nisse. Ebenache ha inchne. Dot osh masane et ego nashida. Hala shema dot e. Yaje be away in shle. Yehe. Yatil. Ranaho ate. Shidian. Neho kaje. Shimasana bashing tia. We are nehianga. We are nehianga. We are nehio. We are nehio. Hi, I'm Onke Dumeko, also known as Forever Onke. I absolutely love Women Radio, um, and my favorite show is definitely Tadia Rice's Womenosity. It is so inspirational, um, and I always get just the boost that I need in life um, to continue. We all need the type of content that can really push us to the max and really get us going through the next day. Fabulous station, fabulous show. I love it. Hello, hi, my name is Hope Azeda. I'm an artist from Kigali, Rwanda. You are listening to Woman Radio. I am listening to. Welcome, Murakazanez. This is Almaz Crow in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, listening to Woman Radio for great interviews and wonderful music. It's important that people come together, and Woman Radio does that, especially for women. Women, let's unite. We got to take over this world while I listen to Women Radio, and I hope you do too. Welcome back, everyone, to Womanosity for women with curiosity like me and you. I'm Tadia Rice, your hostess on this journey around the world with the most remarkable women you will learn about. Radmala, for those of you who don't know, she became the first biracial Miss Navajo and actually still the only Miss Navajo partially of African-American heritage. Your nomination, Radmala, sparked considerable debate over identity. You suffered verbal racial attacks, and despite being so connected to Navajo values, you still experienced racism. This must have hurt terribly, but you endured this treatment from your own people with grace. It seems almost like it empowered you. Can you share what happened? Well, when I became Miss Navajo Nation in 1997, 98, I broke down racial barriers. My grandmother reminded me that my bi- biracial identity was going to be controversial with some Diné. And sure enough, you know, a small percentage of racists expressed their dismay and anti-Blackness when I became Miss Navajo Nation. However, many Diné stood in solidarity with me during and after my term as Miss Navajo and continue to support me to this day as a relative and support from Dinetra and beyond. But I do want to share that anti-Blackness and in anti-Indigeneity still affects Afro-Indigenous and Black Natives, Native relatives to this day. And racism and intercultural racism still runs deep within people's mindsets, beliefs, and, and actions. And so I think if Black Indigenous people continue to experience the brutality and devastating effects of white supremacy and colonization. But we are seeing a major shift in solidarity and collectiveness with Black and Indigenous people. And Indigenous communities are, are also examining their own anti-Blackness and harms that inflicts our Afro-Indigenous Black Native re- relations. Your wish for greater racial harmony led to a very interesting story. I think a lot of folks are not aware that there is racism on the reservations against African-Americans and probably, you know, other people they don't know, they don't understand. And so these reactions occurred and you experienced them. What did you do? Where did you get help from 
to deal with all of this. So an uncle of mine who is a Dine practitioner shared with me the term nahile, which is used uh, in our ceremonies uh, and, and passed that term down to me. And as I began using the term as a part of my clans and first introduced it to the community of Tebetzat, which is Shiprock, New Mexico, and an educator took it upon herself to research the term and shared with me the following breakdown of what it means. Na, those who have come across, hit dark, calm, have overcome, persevered, and we've come to like, eh, oneness. So since publicly introducing this term, na hitha, to various communities on Dinetra over 10, 10 years ago, it's been well received by the majority of Diné. There has been some resistance, as expected, but with certain individuals stating that there's nothing wrong with the Z term, but I always remind these individuals that they are not on the receiving end of hearing it in a racist and derogatory manner. So this new term today, a lot of the younger generation, the our young, our youth have been very proactive in, in centering uh, this term, Nahile. So the Gosh Che Red Ochre Chi clan is the clan that my grandmother is, right? That's my, the, my grandmother is the Red Ochre Chi clan. My mother is the Red Ochre Chi clan. And so in our society as Dine, it is matrilineal. So the the women carry forward those clans. So that so as as a as as a woman from that clan, I now have the Gosh Che clan, and now I carry that 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 clan forward. Wonderful to good to learn that you have been the subject of an award winning documentary entitled hearing Radmila. It was produced and directed by Angela Webb. It explored your journey as an activist and an international performer. Your activism is what I want to talk about because it grew out of the fact that you are a survivor of domestic violence and you've used your personal experiences to advocate against it. You are a survivor of domestic abuse. You founded the Strong Spirit Life is Beautiful, Not Abusive campaign to address teen dating violence. What do you tell your audiences about this? We all have a role in addressing gender-based violence uh, and standing with survivors. And it's very important for us to center survivors' voices and our LGBTQ2 plus relatives. Anyone is experiencing physical abuse, mental abuse, isolation, economic, emotional, sexual assault. It's in, or just even our everyday interactions with you know with with one another. It's important for us to recognize that we all play a role in centering the victims' voices. Gender-based violence is in the work that I do now. Like from how I started from the beginning when I first started speaking out as a survivor of abuse and violence and where I'm at today in terms of intersecting that violence. Now, I talk about, especially my advocacy work, I talk about not just gender-based violence, but environmental violence, racial violence, police violence, all, you know, et cetera, and how they, it's, it's all violence. And what are we doing to, to address that violence within our communities, within our society? And so it's important to recognize that the violence that is out there, the hierarchy of violence, that we all have a role to address that. You know, we all have a role in, in standing up, you know, to perpetrators and holding perpetrators accountable, educating ourselves, which is the most important thing, because when we educate ourselves, then there's that, you know, there's the power and that knowledge and recognizing the red flags, because red flags are, are you know, important to to um, to recognize, especially when you're in, in an abusive relationship, because the flags, those red flags will always present itself and how colonization, you know, has always played a role in violence in our everyday life. It's important for our, all of us to be a voice against violence. I wrote the song when I was going through an adversity in my life. As women, we are not only life givers and nurturers, but the essence and cores of our families. Sometimes when faced with hardships, we lose sight of our inner strengths and faith. So shedding tears has been a way of healing and gaining understanding of our struggles. And this is the song that I wrote, Tears. Let's take a listen, everyone. Enjoy. This is Rad Malakoti singing her most moving and dramatic song, Tears. 
We'll be right back. Don't go away. childhood home and stares onto the land afraid alone a heart that bleeds from life's experience trying to understand much of its predicaments she looks into the sky with hopeless care creator she says i need you here her cry remains an unheard call It's then she sheds a tear to understand it all A tear of joy and love and pain This is her time, her place, her strength One day she'll look back at life's trials and tests Remember that tears of a woman is her inner divine at its best strong and loving forgiving so true loyal and giving unfaltering to Stand beside her children and husband so dear No matter what the cause or circumstances Her love remains as Wisdom to share as a mother of memory so sweet, for it is her love that is her weakness. Each time she sheds a tear unconditionally, a tear of joy and love and pain. This is her time, her place, her strength. One day she'll look back at life's trials and tests Remember that tears of a woman A tear of joy and love and pain This is her time, her place, her strength One day she'll look back at life's trials and tests Remember that tears of a woman And remember that tears of a woman Is her No man is an island. Ladies, let's open up and discuss issues, whether good or bad. Platforms are there. Woman Radio happens to be just one of them. I'm inviting you on the couch to further discuss areas of concern every Thursday from 10 a.m. South African time to 12 noon. On the, on couch, the couch with me, Yvonne Chaka Chaka, here on Woman Radio, well organized man for we are. Meet me at the party on the couch. Hi, I am Dr. Sia. Please catch me every Monday at 7 o'clock in the evening on Woman Radio. 
where I will be talking about breaking free from trauma, from everything that is holding you back from becoming the best version of yourself. Woman Radio, well-organized man, for we are. Hi, everyone. This is Shireen Jaunty, Senior Director at Music Heroes of the Recording Academy, otherwise known as the Grammys. I love this radio station. I love this talk. Woman Radio helps give women the voice they need, and I thank them for supporting women. I'm listening to Woman Radio, and I hope you are too. Welcome back, everyone. I'm with Brad Malakoti. I am so excited to have her in studio with me today. She is such a remarkable artist, a creative, a songwriter, a singer, a mom, a woman, a, an advocate against domestic violence. She's quite amazing. So, you know, I have a question for you, Radmila. What drives you? What keeps you focused? What keeps you grounded? Because you are so determined. I would say that my little monster slayer keeps me grounded every day as he challenges me every day to be a better and healthier mom. Motherhood is beautifully challenging. It definitely keeps me moving forward. How old is your little monster slayer and why do you call him that? My little monster slayer is four years old. And the reason why I call him a monster slayer is because he's going to continue that resistance and against colonialism and capitalism and racism and patriarchy. <laughs> Slay those monsters and boy, all of us, each and every one of us have to become a monster slayer. I like that. Against the monsters that have impacted and affected our lives so negatively, whether it's gender, race, religion, economic status, geography. I mean, these monsters have been with us a long time. We gotta get rid of them. <laughs> Radmila, you're not only an entertainer, a community advocate, to me, a cultural representative, because I think that you really shine the beauty of what the Diné people are, as well as African-American people. Both of these branches of your world who have truly suffered, you're a mentor to so many, but you're also a daughter, a sister, an auntie, you have a partner, and not to mention you're a friend to so many people. What is your secret to balancing your purpose with the personal demands and desires that you face? I think just a love for people, just a love, you know, knowing that we all deserve to live a just, free and dignified life, liberated, dignified life. That's a beautiful secret. Thank you for sharing it. So who are your models of inspiration? Who are your heroes and sheroes and why? I know, I know your grandmother is one of them. I'd love to know more about her, but also your other heroes and sheroes. You just took it right out of my mouth. It, was, it is my grandmother and it always will be my grandmother because <laughs> she's the only voice that I always hear every time I, I need that inspiration. It's, you know, she's, she's that voice. What did Dorothy Cody teach you and tell you? She would always tell me, yeah, which translates to, you know, you can do this. You, you know, believe in yourself, you know, and and um, make it happen. If it is to be, it's it's up to me. It's up to you. Right. So she just was always encouraging, you know, and and so I miss that. So no matter what I'm going through in that moment, I I always think about her and and what she would have advised what advice she would have given to me at that in that in that moment there's nobody else i can't i just i it's always going to be my grandma because everything that i that embodies me today as as a as a as a woman as a person as a as a mother is is from her teachings she loved being out on the land everything that she did was about kinship about eh. And that was her teachings. Everything was based on that. And kinship, eh, as we call it in, in, from a Diné perspective, is not only our relationship to one another, but our relationship to the land, Father Sky, and our non-human relatives. And 
how we continue to strengthen those relationships every day, whether it's planting our corn, whether it's revitalizing our language or supporting with mutual aid, right, during the pandemic, but even before the pandemic, for, you know, just being there continuously strengthening those those relationships, those kinships. And it's just not it, with your family, but with the, ex- you know, the extended relatives and people as a whole, all oppressed people. And that was my grandma. When I came up with the quote, it does not discriminate, it, it, was, it was based on what she even went through with me, uh, raising me and the racism and discrimination that she also experienced because she raised me. She was a beautiful being. She was very um, loving and she was always smiling and just happy. You know, we didn't have a vehicle as, you know, growing up. I didn't grow up with my grandma and I, we didn't have a vehicle. So we hitchhiked everywhere. <laughs> so I was always walking behind her and, or, uh, and we, she would share stories of her, you know, her childhood. And, and when we would stand on the road, of course, I was the one who would stick my little thumb out and, and, and <laughs> she was very vibrant and like I said, full of life, but she had very soft skin and and she always she had long hair so she always wore her hair in a traditional in a tiel, our traditional bun and she wore her beautiful colorful skirts her floral skirts and velveteen tops or cotton tops but <laughs> yeah it was she was she's a she was a person of kinship on every level and, and what i loved about her is that she remained the neck no matter what, she remained Dene through it all. Even as a Christian woman, she was Dene first before anything else that came. You know, she was very modest with her jewelry. So she would wear like a turquoise pin on her shirt or maybe just like a necklace, a turquoise necklace. She was short. She was shorter than me. She, she was brown skin. She just, she was beautiful. If you Google Dorothy Cody, you'll see her on, on the internet. <laughs> Oh well, God. Okay, yeah, I'm on the internet, so Google Dorothy to... Cody and you'll see her. Definitely together. look her up because <laughs> she sounds so wonderful. She sounds like the grandmother we all wish we would would have had. So, what do you hope to do for women by being a, a successful mentor yourself and an example to others? I think just to continue to challenge patriarchy to challenge misogyny, sexism, right? Systems of, systems of oppression that continue to, to try to keep us back as women, you know, to support one another. I think that's the other thing. We have to be very supportive of one another as, as women and continue to build safer spaces for one another. Hey, you know, hey, 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 you know, hey, 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 you know, hey, hey. Hey, you know, hey, hey, hey. Nish on the cock, a bear had the nest, hey, hey, hey. Nish on the cock, a bear had the nest, hey, hey, hey. Shake a nash e cock, a bear had the nest, hey, hey, hey. Shake a nash e cock, a bear had the nest, hey, hey, hey. Hey, you know, hey, 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 you know, hey, 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 you know, hey, 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 you know, hey, 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 you know, hey, 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 you know, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey,
pepe hat ne ste ye ye ne jon ko ke pe hat ne ste ye ye na sa be kha ke ke pe hat ne ste ye ye na sa be kha ke ke pe hat ne ste ye ye ಹತ್ತನೇಷ್ಟೇ <laughs> songs does one speak directly to women about women yes the song a woman's journey is a song that is about a woman who travels through the circle of life from childhood through adolescence and adulthood to old age let's listen to this this is going to be so beautiful everyone enjoy a woman's journey by rad malakoti it's very special we'll be right back don't go away she cares she cares she cares She cares, she cares, she cares. She didn't know, but I'm not sure she cares. No, oh, 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 She cares, she cares, she cares. She didn't know, but I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm not a teen, because I'm a child. I'm a child, because I'm a child. Neo At edge can sleep o ye shall Got shot the apia ke ye shall Dok is ye see your sack o nas ye shall Neo She care she care she care She care she care she care She didn't eh bit mako she care ye Neo Ina atkin pekako yeshal 
Shabik eko bikako ye shal. Shike, shike, shike. Shike, shike, shike. Shitine e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e Shake, 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 Neo Sani Sali go si hasende haseya Kadna ha kos bikake haseya Bashini shioko haseya Neo Shake 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 Sani sali go si hasende haseya, kadna ha kons bikake haseya, bashani shioko haseya, neo shake shake shake, shake shake shake, shake shake shake, shake shake shake, neo Ina atkin bikako ye shal, shabik eko bikako ye shal, shake shake shake, 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 shake,
Welcome back, everyone. We're with Rad Milicoti in the studio today. This is Tadia Rice. You're with Womanosity for Women with Curiosity because we all have it. It's what drives the world and why we rock it. Radmila, how would you describe the way you walk in the world? I do my best to walk in this world with with kinship, with eh, with the land and the sky, our non-human relatives, and with you know, all people. What would you tell your younger self about love, life, or purpose? To be unapologetic. Oh, expand on that one, please. To be unapologetic about things that matter in this world and what's going on in our communities. To be unapologetic about what we want to do and how we want to be in this world. Wanting to be happy and to want to live a just, free and dignified life. So be unapologetic and take up space. I love that part about taking up space. Isn't that the truth? Oh my gosh. What would you say is your biggest achievement to date? And I suspect I know this answer already, but tell us. Being a mom, motherhood. (laughs) I knew it. You've got that beautiful boy. It is a big achievement, isn't it? Becoming a mother is one of the most important things that we ever do in our life. And and now is when the music is going to... Oh, Radmila, do you hear that music? Yes, what is that? It's time to play the Womanosity 25 question in two minutes speed round. And then there's audience applause in this area and the music is going. Think you can handle it, Radmila? I'll try. (laughs) Here we go. I hear the clock ticking. Okay. What color or flavor is your favorite M&M or candy? Red. Are you a cat or dog person? Dog. Would you rather eat chocolate or watch your favorite TV show? TV show. What's one city you've always dreamed of traveling to? I know it's overrated, but London. (laughs) Oh, it's wonderful. Are you a morning or night person? Night. What words do you live by? Yegons, eh, or with the bend, eh, words for my grandma. And what does that mean? You can do it. If it is to be, it is up to me. I'll watch it echo. Love it. What's one vice you wish you could give up? Sweets. <laughs> What's the best compliment you've ever received? Next. (laughs) Oh, okay. I'll give you one pass. That's it. Okay. How do you start your day? With affirmations. (laughs) That's good. I'm going to get through this day. (laughs) When are you most inspired? When I'm holding space and conversations with our femme and women relatives. Lovely. Food, sweet or savory? Sweet. (laughs) <laughs> what makes you smile the most? My little monster slayer. Mm-hmm. What's one thing people don't know about you? <laughs> My life is out there, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I own a lot of heels. <laughs> okay. Oh my! And that leads me right into heels, flats, or sneakers. But I have to wear sneakers because <laughs> I've got to keep up with my little monster slayer. <laughs> What's inspiring you in life right now, Radmila? My little monster slayer. Mm-hmm. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done in your life? Oh, my gosh. I'm scared of heights. And I jumped off of a cliff, uh, the Dead Man's Cliff in Jamaica years, years ago. And I remember when I jumped off the cliff, I was trying to go back up. <laughs> I, I, should I assume you jumped into water? I did. Yes. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> I wouldn't stop. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> oh, Lord, how would you define yourself in three words? Real, fun, and animated. Diamonds or pearls? Neither. Turquoise. Uh-huh. I should have known that. What's something you notice about someone when you first meet them? whether they smile or not. What's the one talent you wish you had? Play guitar. What's I should your- learn, but <laughs> I just need to have the time. Brad Muller, what's your favorite color? Black. And what, clo- what color clothing do you wear the most? Black. 
very consistent. What's the cutest thing on planet Earth? Oh, don't tell me. I know this one. The Monster Slayer. <laughs> Besides my Monster Slayer. <laughs> uh, yeah, the monster, my Monster Slayer. I knew it. And what's the best thing that happened to you this year? This year and every year, uh, growth. Mm, that's lovely. That's something we all need to do, don't we? So I would like to know, what is the favorite song of all your songs? Because I'd like to honor you and play it as we go out. I can't thank you enough, Radmila Cody, for giving me time out of your incredibly busy schedule. Um, I, I'm so happy you were here with me today. Thank you, Tadia, for having me on your radio show. And it's it, it's been wonderful. And I appreciate your patience because it's taken um, a lot, you know, to get to this point to actually make this interview happen. So again, thank you so much for for your patience and and your support and your love. And um, and the song that I enjoy performing and also my little monster slayer singing to my little monster slayer is Shinasha. I know you've written a song that speaks to all of the strengths that we need to develop. Shinasha is a song that was sung by our ancestors when they returned home uh, from being held captive in Bosque Redondo for four years. And it's a song that they sang when they saw our sacred mountain to the south in Himatsotzeth, also known as Mount Taylor. This song means a lot to our people because it's our song of hope. It's our song of resilience, our song of resistance. Let's take a listen to Shinasha, the resistance song of the Diné people, Navajo people, as you may know them. In 1864, our Diné people were held captive at Bosco Redondo, New Mexico. After four years of imprisonment, they were released to return home. On their way back to their homeland, they were emotionally overcome when they saw the sacred mountain, Tzotzil. They rejoiced and sang a song as they returned to their home. Shinasha, 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 Adeho Shola Eahe, Nea, Ahala, Ahala, Gonasha, Ahala, Ahala, Gonasha, Shinasha, 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 Adeho Shola Eahe, Nea, Nahasashima, Gonasha. Jona Eshitra Gonasha Shinasha 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 Ate Hoshola Eahe Nea Tilti and Senel Gonasha Sashike Ilto Gonasha Shinasha 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 ate hoshon la eahe nea ahala ahala gonasha ahala ahala gonasha Shinasha 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 ate hoshon la eahe nea Shitra hosole gonasha Shitsi hasin gonasha Shinasha, 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 Ate Hoshon la Eahe, Nea, Ahala, Ahala, Gonasha, Ahala, Ahala, Gonasha, Shinasha, 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 Ate Hoshon la Eahe, Nea, Shin 
nasha ate hoshon la ea he nea. Thank you for being with me today on Womanosity for Women with Curiosity, broadcasting globally on Women Radio. Enjoy great interviews with remarkable women and music from around the world. Join me, won't you?